Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Toss today here with my good friend from Australia, Infinitely Galactic, also known as IG. This is a spur of the moment, uh, last second podcast, almost literally. Uh, we both have been busy with our respective schedules. IG can spare a few minutes tonight, so I thought we would talk a little bit and catch up on what's been going on with ourselves in the technology world, including the world of Linux. Of course, I'm out of breath. IG, how are you? I am doing well. I am keeping myself busy with multiple different projects, and uh, yeah, people are a lot of fun to deal with. So, um, so yeah, no, it's it's great to be uh, it's great to be able to just um, whip these things up when we can. And uh, yeah, I know I'm keen for a bit of uh, Linux discussion. So, yeah, what have we got on the table? Well, the final releases of the Ubuntu family of Linux OS should be out. Is it the 17th or the 20th? I lost track. Yeah, it's towards the end. It's I'm pretty sure it's the 20 something of okay. April. They they kind of push it right to the end. But yes, I've been running the um the second or the final beta of uh, of Ubuntu 14.04 uh, since it came out, and um, I am pleasantly surprised. Um, it is it is running very well, and I think it will probably be a distribution that I might be sticking with at least for a little while. So uh, it convinced me to to transition off from um, a GA4, which, which is what I was running. And uh, so it's running the show at the moment, and it seems to be handling it pretty well. I have been testing um, both Ubuntu 14.04 and Kubuntu. In fact, I just downloaded Kubuntu today. Even though these are not quite final, they are betas, I think beta 2. Actually, with Ubuntu, I've been testing it since alpha. I didn't notice... With the alpha, I did notice a few bugs, by G, but not not a single crash, and that really impressed me. But mm. I I don't know if it's just me, but maybe you can you know verify. But have you noticed that as time goes on, little by little, each release cycle gets just a little bit more polished, less buggy? Have you seen that? Yeah, for sure. And I think um, especially with the interim releases where it, it actually kind of seems like the release cycle for Ubuntu has kind of been turned on its head because you would think that when a long-term support release comes along, they don't really aim for features as much as they aim for stability and just polishing it up to make sure that it's that it's ready for you know a long term of, uh, of being installed. But um, but to be honest, I'm actually seeing like quite a few more use features come through with Ubuntu 14.04 than what we did with 13.04 and 13.10. And I mean, I know 12.10 was there as well, but I pretty much ignored that release altogether just because stability-wise, it was shocking in my experience. Um, but 13.04 yeah. and 13.10, they both didn't really seem to add too much. They were just little tiny bits and pieces. Whereas, yeah. um, and they and they did seem to get more stable with uh, with each release, even during the development cycles. And now here we are with 14.04, very late in the development cycle. It's pretty stable. Um, like I get like the odd um, the odd bug here or there, yeah. but it's nothing nothing um, show stopping at all. And I, you know, and they're getting less and less uh, the right. closer we get to final release. So. Um, and having said that, there are plenty of useful features that 14.04 is introducing. So, um, so I mean, I think you know, to 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 make the claim that Ubuntu is losing focus on the desktop and and it's kind of trying too hard with the mobile world and it's kind of ignoring the desktop, I reckon it's a pretty rough claim because because um, yeah, at least in my opinion, 14.04 is making strides. It's it's keeping users happy. Um, it's bringing back a lot of features that they wanted, and uh, and and it's all you know remaining stable at the same time. So I think it, everybody's yeah. winning at this stage. Yeah. Well, look, I know Ubuntu or, or Canonical that you know runs Ubuntu. I know they're into this convergence technology for the future, and that's all well and good, and that's fine. But yeah, I would have to agree. I haven't noticed any uh, any slack or lack of quality in the Ubuntu desktop itself. And, and well, as a matter of fact, Ubuntu 13.10. I've been booting into that more than I boot into Windows. And for me, that's been always been used to Windows, usually. That's saying a lot. Uh, it's quite stable. Uh, I believe that 14.04. So far with Ubuntu and Kubuntu, <coughs> excuse me, from what I've been testing, it looks very polished. I've been uploading a bunch of videos on um, how to switch from XP to Ubuntu. Of course, Windows XP officially expired after, you know, 6,000 years later, it seems. Um, Indeed. I have to give MS credit. I cannot think of another OS that has been functionable that long since inception. Can you think of any? Yes, especially a specific release of an operating right. system. I mean, there are plenty of operating systems that have been around in various iterations for, for many years, but I mean, not a single yeah. iteration lasting that long. That's a pretty incredible effort. 
So I know I I know a lot of people are ticked off, but hey, you know, Microsoft gave uh, initial warnings of this, I believe, back in 2007, 2008. And I think with any OS, that there, there's only so much that you can patch, 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 patch. You know what I mean? So I, I think it was time. Mm, um, indeed. So, you know, now there are several options, of course. You can upgrade to Windows 8 and download the software for, I think it's 200 bucks, assuming your computer can handle it. Really, if you're going to spend that kind of money, just buy a new, I think laptops, uh, Windows 8 laptops, IG, I think start as little as 300 US dollars, which are really quite reasonable, and it'll probably be four times as fast as the one you bought in 2001. So, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, so really, all things considered, it's not really a bad deal. I still, excuse me, I still keep getting comments. Uh, I'm, I will still you know, why can't you keep using XP? Well, you know, that opens up a whole can of worms, as it were. You can't, I suppose, if you really want to. Uh, there was some mention, oh, you can still use your computer, just don't go online. Oh, yeah, I oh. have, like, <laughs> exactly, of course. There are a lot of people that don't go on the internet, I guess. <laughs> I suppose so. That was my first reaction. I mean, look, I have this. I have a tablet. I got my my Galaxy S4. It seems like I'm always on the web. Heck, we're on the web now. So I don't know how much uh, that is reality based. Of course, if if somebody just wanted to use it as a spare computer, you know, to play music and use it as a jukebox or something like that, I suppose you can. But the moment you go on the web, I don't care what browser you have. Yes, you know, you know, Firefox may be more secure in Chrome. Sooner or later. You know, without any security updates or patches, something bad is going to happen. I'm sorry, just how I see it. Maybe that's how you see it. Uh, mm -hmm. There are a number of alternatives out there, good alternatives. You know, if if you are just wanting to have a computer as a jukebox, then, you know, there are plenty of Linux distributions that are aimed at being media centers or, you know, and it could really expand the functionality yes. as well as keeping your system stable. If you yes. do want an XP machine for, you know, for legacy software, you know, software that just doesn't run the way it's supposed to on more recent uh, versions of Windows, then running a virtual box is not that hard or indeed just keep running XP on that machine. Don't use the internet if you're using it for, I don't know, MS-DOS games or, you know, legacy software that you have to use for your company or whatever. Uh, and, and I can see that happening in, in the corporate world quite a bit until, you know, companies get on the updating bandwagon. Um, but right. really, I mean, for the average consumer, there are so many other options out there nowadays. I mean, gosh, even getting a Chromebook nowadays is so ridiculously affordable. It yeah. will fill it will fill the need of yes. whatever XP was doing before then. Uh, even, for example, um, the... The Chrome apps, uh, the online apps for both Word or for Word, PowerPoint, and Excel, basically the Office suite uh, on on the Chrome OS now is actually really, really close to what um, to mm. what the normal desktop versions are. And it, you know, it was pointed out in a news article earlier in the week that this is just another step that uh, that Linux users can take to transition away from the Microsoft world, even if they still need access yeah. to things like Office to open documents that they receive from other people. And the compatibility is perfect. Yes. Um, and, you know, and it really solves yet another problem. So I think Microsoft's golden age as far as an operating system is probably over. But uh, just because of the fact how fragmented the market is with Android and iOS right. and Mac and, right. and Linux as well. But um, but that's not to say that Microsoft isn't capable of of still um, retaining you know the its hold on uh, things like Office uh, software and stuff like that the stuff that they actually put a lot of time and energy into making good quality software and I think while Microsoft can provide good quality software regardless of what platform you're running on then um, yeah. then I think they'll do all right but if they kind of put all of their eggs in the Windows basket. Um, then, yeah, I think they're, they've already been met with a rude surprise in that world. And so I think they're learning well, from their mistakes. Well, look, uh, Windows 8 or even 8.1 or 8.1.1 or the update to 8.1, I think that's what came out lately. It's it's not for everybody. And I understand that. Um, you know, with, with, with the choices, I, you know, you mentioned Chromebooks and Chrome OS. Evidently, those are the top-selling laptops on Amazon, and for a good reason. You get the free upgrades and updates for life. I, I do believe it is a – they are usually web-centric, you know, machines, um, although with some of them with the larger capacity hard drives, you can certainly download stuff and do it while offline. But, you know, we, know, we, we talked about, gee, does anybody use a machine – 
who does not go online. I think it's just the opposite. And for someone who maybe doesn't do what we do or just wants to go online and search the web, Chromebooks <clears throat> Chromebooks are excellent because they are based on a form of Linux and they're generally uh, malware free as far as I know. I don't currently own a Chromebook. I thought about getting one to test, but you know what? I, I haven't had I don't recall having any requests to um, you know test a Chromebook, but from what I've seen, from what I've heard, I think they are a viable alternative for two hundred dollars, you know, to XP. Or you know, if you absolutely need Windows, why not go to Windows 8 for three hundred? You can download um, certain extensions to bring back the um, you know IG the, the start menu function of Windows Indeed. 7. So yeah. you know what, and also I, in recent yeah. news, the update for Windows 8.1 <laughs> is bringing back an older style of start menu. Anyway, so uh, it, it is slightly revised, but it you know it still is bringing back the traditional functionality okay. of the start menu in Windows itself. So basically, Microsoft has copped enough flack in that arena that it's like, <laughs> all right, already, we'll give it back to you. <laughs> Duh, you know. I remember my first test, my first download of the beta for Windows 8, if you recall seeing it, but I thought to myself, wow, this, I liked that idea because it wasn't the same old, same old. It was completely different. Just like Linux, there are so many choices. It's never the same old, same old. You know, what with customizations between Linux Mint, the GNOME shell, and, and whatever. I thought it was cool, but it's missing the traditional start menu because this is going to be too much of a shock. They must have finally listened to me after all those secret memos, right? But no, um, absolutely. <laughs> it's it's still optimized for touch screen, but you know, I use it in a virtual box still. I haven't I haven't gone the 8.1 or the 8.1 update. You know, to me, there's just that not that much of a change. I have downloaded the uh, the uh, start menu of the Windows 7 extension. I forget what it's called. It, it's a freebie, and it works just fine. So for me, that's perfectly fine. But for someone who's been on Windows XP for, what, 10 years, Windows 8 is quite a jump. There's no, even with the touchscreen. So perhaps, just perhaps, if you got to stick with Windows, just go to Windows 7. It's perfectly fine. I use it. I dual boot. You'll fit right in for Windows XP. Or if you want to try something different, like you said, there are pl plenty of Linux-based PCs out there, such as Chromebooks. There is the Mint Box. Um, I think even Android PCs, right? I think I saw one or two that more and more fan manufacturers might be doing more Android PCs. Have Have you seen Indeed. that? Yeah, yeah, I think it's just because of the fact the sheer uh, the sheer market out there, the market size of of the amount of apps available and the amount of yeah. hardware it supports. It, it, it I guess it just kind of makes sense in some markets. Yeah. But um, but as far as you know, like more professional level software or you know, um, computer productivity when it comes to a mouse and keyboard, you're definitely going to be better off with uh, with a Linux based distribution or yeah. a or a Chromebook or um, you know or Mac or Windows 8 or something like that. But yeah, it's um it's a fascinating it's a fascinating sort of switch in the industry. And like you were saying, the fact that XP has been around for that long, it's just trained users to the point where if right. you're if you're professionally working with a computer, chances were you were using Windows XP. And I kind of get the feeling that now that Windows 8 is here, that Windows 7 is going to become the new Windows XP, that in 10 years' time, people will still be running Windows 7 and sure. calling it the greatest operating system <laughs> ever. Um, right, 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 yeah, yeah. And uh, But at the same time, this th this whole industry move but towards mobile devices, I think, has really uh, shaken up the way that users are going to be using their devices and their, and their technology going into the future. Because, I mean, for someone like myself and many people uh, in my generation, um, because of the fact we're using so many different devices already, we kind of just figure out how to use them and we just get on with life because, you know, we want to, we still want to be able to check Facebook and Twitter and get on YouTube and, yes. you know, and it's like, it becomes very web centric as opposed to, you right. know, oh, uh, this is okay. Where's my start button sort of thing. Right. And, right. um, and I think that'll probably help things moving forward, but definitely for the, for the professional level software that's out there at the moment, um, I, I get the feeling Windows 7 is going to become the new, uh, Windows XP. Yeah, I mean, look, Windows 7, you know, for all of its little things that irk me, just last night I was watching the uh, baseball game. I followed the New York Yankees baseball team. I haven't seen them in so long. But, you know, my I, I had Windows 7 up and running. And it's been a while since I've done security updates and all the updates. Of course, you heard about the heart bleed, um, you know, thing with the OpenSSL. Indeed. All yeah. right, so I thought, you know what, it's been a while. Even 
sometimes I don't always practice what what I preach. Yes, no matter what operating system you run, always do the updates always on a regular basis. Since I've been booting more into Ubuntu, like over 60-70%, I haven't been using Windows 7 that much. So you know what? Let me download these updates. Well, these were not just little updates. They were update packages and packs. And I had forgotten, IG, sometimes just how long it takes to not so much download, but to install and configure. So first it downloads, and it'll, you know, it'll tell you, you know, does like a little progress bar, which is all well and good. Then you have to reboot. Then it starts configuring before it reboots. And there was a time, I'm watching the game, watching my monitor, 8% done, configuring Windows updates, please don't turn off the machine, right? Okay, fine. 8%. Watching the game, now it's going from the third, the fourth inning, the fifth. It's still stuck at 8%. I felt my computer froze. I'm like, wait a minute. This, is, this isn't this is Linux. That's one of the things <laughs> that does it. Well, you know what I mean, of course. So Exactly. That still irks me. It's like, oh, my God, I'm still waiting because I'm so used to Linux. It's all done in one clip. Maybe you reboot, but then you boot straight into the desktop. Not mm. always the case with Windows, of course. Now, to be fair, I've never had a bug or a crash in Windows 7. Don't know about it yet. After doing all the updates, I've yet to experience a bug or a crash. I can't really say that about Linux, not yet. But to be fair, with Microsoft's Windows 7, yes, updates can take a while and be time-consuming and a pain in the you-know-what. But I'm making a statement because I had forgot about just how long it could take to do all the updates, especially like if it's been a while. Not to mention, exactly. not to mention running the virus scanner, which you have to do in Windows. So, but that being said, uh, yeah, for some people, you know, uh, from Windows to Linux may be too much of a jump. But look, these distributions they are free to try or keep. Um, once Ubuntu 14.04 comes out, I'm, I'm sure me and IG will do a full review on those. Um, I recommend them, either Ubuntu or Kubuntu. I would probably, yeah, I would probably recommend if your machine is too old, maybe try Zubuntu with an X or Lubuntu with an L. If your machine uh, has at least a gigabyte of RAM, in my opinion, uh, you should be fine with Ubuntu or Kubuntu. How do you see it? Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's so much choice out there available just in the Ubuntu family, and they represent the most user-friendly and most widely supported Linux distributions out there. So if you don't find, um, you know, it, it'd be very difficult to find a solution that doesn't work for you, even in that family of Ubuntu's. Um, and uh, while Ubuntu holds kind of the most uh, the most modern or the most sort of frequently developed um, desktop experience out of all of those, the the, def, the distributions like Kubuntu, Lubuntu, Zubuntu um, are all quality um, operating systems in their own right, and uh, right. they all have a lot going for them. And it right. really ultimately just depends on what works best for you. They all present different ways of of working with your computer, and some will appeal to uh, to, will appeal to XP users, some will appeal to Windows 7 users, yes. some will even appear to to Mac users. So oh, yeah. you know, there's a lot of choice out there, um, and if you're looking for an alternative, <laughs> then definitely just download it, try it on a live USB or a live CD, yes. and uh, and you know chances are you'll find uh, you'll find a pretty <laughs> decent alternative. All right, uh, I'm looking at the clock. I know you need to go. You have an appointment. Let's just send it with, yeah, you can definitely check out the reviews that me and IG do. Uh, I've done, I've, I've uploaded uh, part one, two, and three on how to switch from XP to Ubuntu. I think I'll probably do one more tonight, part four, that, and that series there, then go, go into a review of the final release, which is next week. So, uh, yes, if you are a Windows XP user, and you maybe you have tried a Linux distribution, but are worried about maybe something working completely out of the box. The only way that I can guarantee you a Linux uh, PC working completely out of the box, where all the apps work, is to simply buy one. Uh, I think we've talked about this before, such as a Mint Box, a Mint Box 2, which is Linux Mint. Uh, there are several uh, Ubuntu uh, PCs with Ubuntu pre-installed. Where, look, if you buy a PC. And something doesn't work out of the box, whether it's Mac, Linux, or Windows, then you should take that PC back. Because in my opinion, everything should work out of the box, no bugs. So if you are scared, buying a PC that is Linux-based, Chrome OS, I don't really see a problem. So Exactly. Yeah. So, 
All right. Well, I know you need to go. So, yeah, we'll just wrap it up here. There's, there's obviously more and more to talk about this. Um, j- just a quick one out there to all the listeners. March 29th was the four-year anniversary of Total OS Today. Next month will be the three-year anniversary with me and IG's first podcast. So we are grateful for that. We are still here. Thanks to all of you. It's that simple. So, IG, on that note, you may, if, if you want to take us out, go ahead. For sure. Uh, so, yeah, thank you all to uh, to all of the listeners who have been listening to the show and following us for that long. And and if, of course, you've only just joined us over the last year or so, or even the last week or so, then welcome aboard. Uh, it's quite a ride. And uh, with this ever-changing world of technology that we're living in, it's uh, it's great to be able to discuss this kind of stuff and, of course, get your feedback on it. So if you have any thoughts on what we've been talking about, let us know in the comments below. And, uh, yeah, definitely subscribe to Total OS Today's channel if you haven't already. And uh, subscribe to mine if you don't know who I am, then definitely go and check me out as well. And, uh, yeah, there's plenty happening, so there will be links down below, I'm sure, and I'll be sharing this one around uh, on my respective social networks as well. So thank you all for listening, and we will catch you sometime in the future. Thank you. Bye-bye.